The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the April 10th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question, but you can't call it in, Oh, no, uh, you can't call in. You can always send me an email. And send that to Steve at TFNN.com. Send it early, if you will. And inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. So right now we've got a sea of red for the most part out here. The only, uh, actually we do have a sea of red right now. All the uh, sectors inside the S&P 500 are trading to the downside. All the U.S. indices that we track are doing the same. Dow's off 421 points, a little over 1%. Uh, about 1% for the S&P or 52 points. 1% for the NASDAQ, 100, 199 points. Two and three tenths percent for the Russell, 48 points there. 71 points for the semis. That's a one and a half percent move. Gold is down five bucks. Silver's up 27 cents. Light speed crude is uh, 44 pennies. Natural gas is flat in the 30 treasury for down to 116.14. Who are the movers in the clubhouse this morning? Well, to the upside, it's NVIDIA up 11 bucks. I did mention they had a TD nine count bottom pattern yesterday, so not a surprise here. Axon Enterprise up eight bucks. McKesson is up five bucks. Eli Lilly is up four, and Constellation Energy is up five. The Shakers to the downside. Decker's Outdoor, 59 point move, nearly 7%. Equinix is down 3% or 25 bucks, 6% for restoration hardware, eighteen dollars and change. Micro strategies off twenty. Public storage is down sixteen. So we got movers and we've got shakers. So let's begin by taking a look at what. Mm. Let's take a look at. Let's come back. Uh, you know what we're going to take a look at. We're going to take a look at the one hundred and twenty minute time frame charts. We took a look at those yesterday. I suggested that they were controlling the markets. So let's go see what they're communicating to you and I. And when I say they're controlling the markets, if we take a look at the uh, top of the form, we had a nice rally last uh, Friday. That was after that big Nike swoosh to the downside. We did have that spot follow to that had a one-day rate of change about plus 10%. Lasted. It created a nice little rally. And the rally ended after it completed a, a TD9 count top uh, for the ES, the NQ, and the Dow. Uh, uh, and that was last Thursday at uh, 2 p.m is when that high came in. Well, we can see out, you don't see the charts, though. Sorry about that. Off my game already. Already off my game on the first on the first tee. That's terrible out there. Thank you, Mr. Bill. Thank you uh, inside the uh, den out there. So now you got those two-hour time frame charts out there. So here we can see you've got this TD9 count that took place at 2 p.m. It's the same thing inside the NQ. It's the same thing inside of the Dow Equity Future Contract. Each time we've gotten up towards that level, for example, we did that at 10 o'clock in the morning. That was yesterday, I believe, on April the 9th. And then we had that swoosh to the downside to test support. Then we have the CPI numbers come out. 
and price uh, uh, was again right back at that same level. And then we had that swoosh to the downside. And what did price do? Price came all the way back to that TD9 count breakout level at 51.95 and held. So what does that tell us? That tells us at day's end, watch 51.95. Now, I, I don't know where the profile level is on the daily time frame. I don't have that memorized out there. But watch 51.91.50. Uh, if it uh, if we get a close below that on a two hour time frame, that would likely suggest lower price out there. If you look at the NQ, it gets right back to the 1801.51.50 level, which is also right around that perigee pivot point out there. So watch that 1801.51.50 area, just like in the ES 51.95.50. In the case of the Dow, it is trading below. So the Dow has broken through its TD9 count breakout level. I would say that it's the ES and the NQ at this stage of the game that are controlling things out there. So this is a time frame and a chart that is worth watching. Of course, all you need to do is write down on your pad of paper 51.95.50 and then watch the two hour closes. So you're looking at 10, 2, 10, 12, 2, and 4. Uh, for each of those. And on the on the NQ, it's 18.051.50 out there. Now let's go maybe for a deeper dive and see what else we might be able to find out here. Let's close out these two-hour time frame charts. And let's go uh, take this now. It's going to pop up on our screen right now, although, um, and we'll come back to, uh, we'll come back to the metals. But if you give me a moment here, we'll get back to the right spot. And the right spot would be this spot. So here we've got the ES Mini. So the interesting thing, um, if you caught the opening of the show, and you'll see when we change, t uh, turn over to the NQ charts out here, is that the NQ completed a, a TD9 count bottom yesterday. Pretty odd. Well, we're bar number seven inside the ES Mini. That says you could actually get, if the market does move lower uh, tomorrow, as an example, uh, you could get a, a TD9 count bottom that's going to go ahead and complete inside the ES Mini. Not tomorrow. Tomorrow will be Thursday, but you could get that pattern that forms between tomorrow and Monday out there. So just kind of keep that in mind. If we look to the other shorter-term intraday charts out here, what we don't see is any kind of a bottom signal. What we do see is a 10-minute time frame that formed a TD9 count top. And right now, price is pulling back, and it's testing its oscillator and change line. It's at around the, uh, I'll give you the exact number here, probably 50, I think it's trading right below it right now, 5201 is what we'll call it, 5201. And if price uh, continues to move below this, that tells us that we're likely headed back either to the 5187 or 5179.75 level. So that's on the ES Mini. It was only the 10-minute chart that identified um, a, a short-term top out here. Let's go see what's going on inside the NQ charts. So it's going to take a moment for these to populate. But what you will see in that upper left-hand corner, you will see a TD9 count bottom pattern. And what price did this morning, it pulled back and it tested that area. And that area, or that specific Specific price point, the low of that. Uh, I'm just gonna wait for these to populate. Sorry about that. Of course, I have it on another screen too. Where is that market update? A close below. So the the low there is 1805150. That's a key area to watch. If price was 1805150, that was the uh, two-hour chart. Uh, uh, TD9 count break I love, I believe. I believe it was. So here you go. So now you got this on the daily time frame as well. And the price did close below that level. Well, then that pattern gets negated. What that would then be telling us is that we would be headed lower. So to head lower, what I'd have to look at, I'd have to look at the weekly time frame chart, which I don't have up on this screen here. The reason is because price is also testing profile support. And that profile support is at 18.163. So there's a lot of support between the 18.051 and 18.163 level. It is also a TD9 count top that uh, the rally stopped on on the 10 minute time frame so those of you that are intraday traders out there my suggestion i haven't looked at the five minute charts out there but my suggestion keep that 10 minute chart up on your screen today right now that seems to be the one that's giving us the signals steve rhodes with tfnn we come back to this blake let's take a look at the gdx for hector tgb for dan from new york and dks for elo we'll be right back If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, up, folks. Hey, let's first take a detour and go out to Birmingham to speak with Gary. Gary, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. And what part of what Birmingham are you in? Birmingham, Michigan, Birmingham, Alabama, or another Birmingham? Bur I'm in uh, Birmingham, Alabama. Yeah, there you, you go. Know, today's weird. Today's a weird Wally Wednesday. You know that, right? Oh, I do know. I do know. What's weird about it, though? But, hang on, hang on. I'm sorry. So uh, you want to take a look at Palantir? You want to take a look at Palantir? And uh, are you in Palantir? Are you looking to get in? Uh, tell me what you're doing and how I can best help you. Hello? Okay, I think we lost it. I think we lost Gary out there, but I will go ahead and keep uh, Palantir up on my screen uh, since uh, since he had requested that. If we take a look at it, you've got an A to B equals CD pattern to the uh, downside. That B point, which formed on uh, March 19th, it had volume there of about uh, 43 million shares. It was passed with 70 million shares. So it's a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. But right now, what price has done is finding support at the bottom of its daily profile. So a close below 2210, which suggests that move down to about the uh, 2090 level. That's where that uh, one to one A to B equals CD pattern of completion would take place. But right now, what you've got is just simply a consolidation with inside its daily profile that ranges from 22.10 up to 23 bucks. So we look at the weekly time frame chart. What we have out there is we've got a Rhodes momentum indicator top with price below its oscillator and change line. That suggests a move lower as well. We can see on the monthly time frame, price rallied right up into the uh, TD9 count breakdown resistance level of 27.11. So you got short term support right now at 22.10. A close above 2360 would say that maybe the A to B equals CD pattern is actually not going to come to fruition. But short of that, 
that's what the uh, plan is. So uh, thanks so much for the call. And let's go to our next request. The next request coming in from Hector and Patty. And they want to take a look at the GDX. So let's play. And specifically what Hector was looking at was the weekly time frame. So let me give you the weekly time frame numbers that you were looking for, which is where's the next resistance point? Price is trading above the top of its weekly profile out there. So the next, and it's trading above its oscillator and change line. So the top of the profile was down at 29.79. Its current oscillator and change line is at 30.25. But the price target to the upside, or the next resistance point, would be up at the 35.81 level. So that's what we see when we take a look at the weekly time frame chart. There's no A to B equals CD pattern. Uh, there's not anything other than price trading above resistance levels. And so what that tells us, Hector and Patty, is that it is the daily time frame right now that is controlled rolling things. The reason is because yesterday was bar number nine of a TD9 count. So that pattern is completed. Even, even if we were to rally miraculously and get above uh, yesterday's high, well, then the, the high of the TD9 count would just simply have to be shifted. But right now, you've got really two things. You have a you have a TD9 count top and you have a new profile. Really, there's three things out here on the daily time frame that are that are really important for, uh, Hec uh, for Hector and Patty and everybody else out there. The first, the second thing is a new profile. And the new profile is bearish in structure. The top of that profile is at 34.30. So that's not the high of the TD9 count. In order to negate the TD9 count, price must close above yesterday's high, and that's up at 34.59. So I jot that number on a pad of paper. I would also have 34.30 on a pad of paper. Now, what price has done so far after that TD9 count, it's pulled back and has tested a key level of support. That is that green oscillator and change line. We have not seen price below the oscillator and change line except for once back on March the 19th. We haven't seen a uh, close below that since uh, February 20th. So if price did close below that, that being about 3404, uh, such so you've got a number, if it did close below it, that would tell price would head to the bottom of the daily profile. If I didn't give you that figure, I'm giving it to you now. It's 32 bucks even, Steven. So it looks like to me, no topping pattern on the weekly. You got a topping pattern on the daily. It's a matter of it testing support. It's already tested one level of support. So that makes the uh, GDX on a daily time frame neutral, bullish on the weekly and bullish on the monthly time frame. That doesn't mean we're not going to get a further pullback out there. Uh, but we do now at least have additional an additional support level to watch and to monitor. Uh, so Hector and Patty, I think that's all that I've got for Well, no, that's not all that I have for you. Stevie spoke too soon. There there is something else, and that is trying to understand what gold is doing. So let's just do this here. I'm going to stay on this screen for a moment. Well, then we will switch screens out there. Well, we'll come take a look at this. Here we can take a look at the weekly uh, charts for uh, uh, for gold as well as the uh, weekly charts for silver as well as the – we already really went through the GDX. There's no reason for us to go through that either. But what we do know is in the case of gold, it has a TD9 count top that is completed. Um it actually is or was attempting to form a new profile. So let me come check that out. Let me hit my refresh button out there and just make sure that yeah, it's, so it ha it's attempting to form it. Uh, but the white background chart tell, tell me that it did go away. So now I don't have a new profile necessarily inside of gold, at least at this moment in time. So what we do have is where's the level of support on a pullback for gold? And the answer to that question is pretty easy. That would be the oscillator and change line. That's at 23.23 right now. That number is going to change by a buck or two. Uh, but figure that is an area of support uh, for the daily time frame. The weekly time frame is likely going to go ahead and confirm a bar number eight of a TD9 count. And all that needs to take place next week for that pattern to go ahead and confirm is a close below, is a close above, I should say, is a close above 21.8160 come next week out there. So you get the daily top, you've got a weekly top out there. In the case of silver, it's going to go ahead and confirm a TD9 count top this week that pattern completes next week today is in bar number nine of a td9 count pattern out there so that pattern is going to complete uh, as well and it looks like you actually have a key reversal bar now 2823 was its one-to-one -one price projection what it did uh, earlier in the day is it got up to a high of 2865 so it's made the one-to-one -one price objective out there and if price closes one tick lower today silver will have a sell the d point pattern it will also have a td9 count top so what metals are telling us, whether it's a GDX, silver, or gold, when we take a look at it priced in dollars, that things are getting ready to head lower. But my question is, are they? Let's try to answer that question.
By that, we're going to go take a look at what's going on with regard to Goldilocks by looking at those black background screens. And specifically, we're going to take a look at how is gold trading in the other major currencies out there. So now what we can see here is we are at, this is the daily time frame. In the daily time frame, we have not made a new all-time high today for gold price in dollars, but we have in terms of euros. We have in terms of yen. We have in terms of Great British Pounds. We have not in terms of Chinese yuan. We did that yesterday. And we have in terms of Australian dollars out there. So what the point of this is they are not sellers. So we can have sellers here in the U.S. and buyers overseas. And that says that the move to the downside should be muted. That's what it's signaling to you and I as we speak right now. Again, new all-time highs today in terms of Aussie dollars, in terms of Great British Pounds, in terms of yen, in terms of euros out there. And so those folks are sellers when they take a look at gold priced in their currency. So I'm not expecting a big, gigantic, at least at this stage of the game, a big, gigantic swoosh to the downside. In fact, we're going to go to a breakout there. Nah, I don't have it updated. I don't have it updated, so I won't I won't turn to uh, that. Uh, so Hector and Patty, that's gold. Everybody else out there, that's gold. That's silver. Those are the miners out there. And we come back to this break. Let's go take a look at TGB. For Dan from New York, and then we'll take a look at DKS for ELO inside the Tigers. And of course, I'd love to hear from you as well. 877-927-6648 or Steve at TFNN.com. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Tigers, we have some exciting news. Live Trading Fridays are here. Join Larry Pesavento every second and fourth Friday of the month, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern time, as he places short-term trades and gives insights into his strategies. That's right. That means the first Live Trading Fridays event starts this Friday, April 12th. Make sure to sign up so you don't miss the potential for huge gains. If you've attended Larry's stellar webinars before, you'll be familiar with the Live Trading portion. Live Trading Fridays will be strictly this portion. That's three hours of pure trading. All trade positions will be communicated clearly, and all questions will be answered in a timely fashion during these live events. When signing up, make sure to save $50 by using code LARRYLIVE at checkout. This code is valid only for this month, and a discount stays with you for as long as you're a subscriber to the service. So don't delay. Sign up, sit back, and follow Larry Pesavento as he places trades live. See you there, Tigers. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, 
you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, uh, folks. So Dan from New York would like to take a look at the Seiko Mines. TGB is the uh, ticker symbol out there. As we take a look at uh, this, uh, this negated a TD9 count top that it had. It did it, uh, certainly negated it yesterday out there. And what price is doing so far, Dan, it's pulling back and it's testing two key levels of support. One level is the top of its profile. The top of that profile is at the price range of 240 Four, it is uh, 244 even Steven out there. And below that, you can see that green oscillator and change line. In fact, let's open up the daily time frame chart up here. When I developed that green oscillator and change, or the, it wasn't green at the time, when I developed that tool out there, it was really to help me understand when a retracement was just simply a retracement or when it was something more. In this case here, this is just a retracement. Now, if price were to close below that green oscillator and change on the 242, then it could be telling, especially if there were two closes below that, that there's something more. Now, that something more doesn't mean it's, you know, it's, it's necessarily bad news, but that something more would say a retracement. Doesn't mean that it'll get back to test support, but we do have support levels down at 211 to 2. 15 and that would certainly be a potential price target but that's not where you're at as we speak right now so this still remains uh well i probably can find but let's just make sure is there an a to b equals cd pattern out there it certainly is not the cleanest and it is certainly one big expansion um out there so um you know, and you do have a bear separating line. Here's what I would do if you are long. I'd certainly watch that 242 level out. Let's see what the weekly and monthly charts. So weekly chart, okay. So the weekly chart is going to go ahead and complete a TD9 count top out there. So that says that uh, it's going to confirm a TD9 count top. It completes that pattern next week. Now that says price could pull back to a buck 92. So it says it could. Doesn't say that it will. And at this stage of the game. We don't have that signal. How would we get that signal is really what I would like to ask you, Dan. And I think your answer would be that signal would come from a close below 242 or whatever that number is at day's end on the uh, TGB daily time frame chart, that green oscillator and change line. The monthly chart looks muy bueno. There's no topping pattern other than getting back towards a TD9 count breakdown level. So we're early in the month and we can see that price has found resist. Well, it's sort of found resistance at that 238 area out there. So it's really just trading into a swing point. It's so early in the month. I'm not even going to take a look at volumes out there because it's really the daily and the weekly right now that you want to be most concerned with. Remember, on a TD9 count, it can be the bar after bar number nine that forms that pattern or completes that pattern out there. So... Um, uh, so that's what I see when I take a look at TGB, and uh, thank you so much for the request. Last request that we've got so far, and we're only halfway through the show out there, so please feel free to uh, go ahead and email me, Steve, at TFNN.com, or give us a call at 877-927-6648. Of course, all of you debtors can help out as well. So let's go take a look at DKS for ELO inside the Tiger's Den. DKS right now is trading out at... Uh, right at the bottom of its daily profile. So it's trading at a support level out here. A ELO, that support area is at the 20, 205.04. We're at 204.96. So watch 205.04. If price does close below that, it could be signaling to you and I that it wants to go ahead and fill that gap. And in order to do that, price would have to make its way all the way back to the top of the bar from March the 13th. And the high on that is out at the uh, 189.72. So a close below profile support, not just today. You'd need to see that tomorrow, too. Then that would su suggest that we could be seeing a move lower. However, why Stevie's saying could. Today's going to become bar number seven of a TD9 count. And likely we're going to see lower lows, by the way. All we've seen out here are lower highs ever since the Rhodesman to Mitigator Top had formed out there. And there's nothing different here today. But what you could get between tomorrow, Thursday, and Monday is a TD9 count bottom. So that's what I'll be watching for with regard to Dick's Sporting Goods. Now, on the weekly time frame, this does not have a top. I take that back. 
I mean, the retracement here, this B to C retracement, there's no way that's a 0 0.382 retracement. But if we use that as A to B and then C to D, then we'd say, okay, you've got, you know, some type of sell to D point top. Really what's most important, whether there's a top or not, is price is trading with inside profiles right now. So what we do know is that even if price does close below the 205.04, I think that was that the number? No. It was... Um, yeah, 205.04. If price does close about 205.04, what we can now do is we can now give ELO a price target. The price target would be the bottom of the daily profile and or or that weekly oscillator and change line. So support on a weekly time frame ranges right now between 197 and change, 197.11 up to 199.60 out there. And if price were to get below that weekly oscillator and change line, then that would be telling us something else. So things look pretty good pretty good in respect that of course i don't know where you're at uh with this instrument but um that's that's the best information i can provide for you so hope that helps you out that was for elo inside the tiger's den was there another request there was john wants to take a look at apple uh thank you so much for that request out there let's go see what apple is doing and then uh elo would like to take a bldr we'll be happy to do that as well we got all kinds we've got nothing but time as we speak right now uh but uh, uh the problem with this chart is stevie's fat fingers it uh, didn't put an aapl and it was trying to find some instrument that doesn't exist out there not really what you want to do especially when you're live doing a podcast you like things to go just kind of smooth that's why i like to get all the requests in ahead of time as you know i kind of have five different uh uh presets up there so i can put those in and boom we can go right to them we don't have to wait for this stuff nonetheless that's what we're waiting for so when we take a look at apple what do we know about apple right now it's trading below the bottom of its daily profile the bottom of that profile is at 169.95 we're at 167 out there so what's apple communicating to you and i i'm looking at the weekly time frame what's it communicating to you and i What's this week going to be? It's going to be a TD nine count bottom. So on a weekly time frame, what we have out here with regard to Apple is a TD nine count bottom. Now, what you'd like to see Apple do today out here, John, is you'd like to see it close above the low from April 2nd. The low from April 2nd was uh, 168.23. The following day was a bullish engulfing candle. That set up a road momentum indicator bottom. So only a close below that would then say, OK, we're headed lower. Headed lower to do what? Well, there is another bottom pattern. There are two other bottoming signals that are out here. The one that uh, came about on the trading day of April 2nd was uh, a TD combo count out there, a uh, time to mark a combo count. And that requires a close above four bars. A, the, in order to confirm that pattern, you need to see a close above the bar four bars earlier. One, two, three, four. We, didn't, we, we haven't gotten that. So we would be looking for that as a potential bottom pattern on the daily time frame to go with that weekly TD9 count. Now, today or Friday will be bar number nine on the weekly basis. Remember, that low can come on the bar following bar number nine. Let's open up the daily time frame chart, see what else we have here. So certainly we can see A to B equals CD downside patterns out there. Let's draw in the what I would say would be the larger one at this moment in time inside of Apple. So there's your A to B line. We're just simply going to go ahead and uh, copy and paste and assemble. So now we are true CPA. So there you've also got the A to B equals CD. You'd also, so even if it does negate this, which was a Roachman to indicator bottom and a buy the D point bottom out there, even if it does negate that by closing below that low from April 2nd at 168.23, the next bullish reversal candle would confirm a buy the D point pattern. See Roach with TFNN. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits.
the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets, with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hey, welcome back, uh, folks. What I put up on my screen out here is the S&P 500 seasonal pattern upon the release of the consumer price index that was released at uh, 8 30 this morning that's what set off the uh, move to the downside um i guess over the fear that we're not going to reduce interest rates you know I'll, i won't do it right now i'll try to remember to do it overnight is pull up my uh, screens we you, you've I looked at this before and markets go lower when interest rates start moving lower out there and, and markets rise in rising environment, rising interest rate environments out there. So you got to be careful what you wish for. But regardless of all that, here if we take a look at over the last 25 years, that means there's been 299 releases of CPI data. And here's how the market or the S&P 500 has, has, uh, has operated, has uh, traded. This is day one. What's the 25-year average out here? Then on day one, the markets move lower, and then they move higher again. So the question is, that's kind of an interesting pattern. Do you think that there's a chance that that's what we're going to see out here? Now, I pose that out there before for you, so you should at least consider that, especially if you're intraday traders and you're looking at maybe overnight or tomorrow's activity out there. I'm not suggesting that the market's going to bounce uh, to the rest of the day out there. I'm not suggesting that at all, but we have support levels to keep watching out there. If we switch over, we take a look at what's going on. One of uh, Peter in Park City's favorite indicators is that New York Stock Exchange advanced decline oscillator. We take a look at it. That would be panel number three. That would be the center area, and you can see I've got written there, advanced decline oscillator, so you see which area we're looking at. Right now, the reading on it is minus 143, 142.63. I don't know what it's going to be at day's end, but when you get down to the minus 150 area, and 143 qualifies for me as 150 area, that's typically where we see bounces or bottoms. It's not, it's not a guarantee, but now we take a look at what the CPI, what the market's response is typically on day one. We're just doing that average move as it has done over the last 25 years. And we are now in an oversold condition. And we've got a TD9 count bottom pattern in the daily time frame for the NQ. Or at least we do now. Again, that pattern goes away if there's a close below the low of 18.05150 at day's end out there. So just something for you to consider out there. Let's go to our next request. This came in from ELO. He wants to take a look at ticker symbol BLDR. Give me a moment. We'll get over to those uh, charts out there. Actually, you didn't see the uh, 
here is that, uh, again, here's that daily TD9 count bottom pattern, upper left-hand chart for the NQ. But let's go take a look at BLDR. I'm assuming that that is uh, some type of uh, real estate uh, ETF out here. We take a look at Dub or Boulder. It's Builders for Sourcing. So maybe it's an individual stock. So as we take a look at it, ELO, on, uh, it, this formed a Roadsman Indicator top. It uh, confirmed that pattern on the trading day of March the 25th. And now we have price trading below the bottom of its daily profile and testing an area of support, which is where price had broken out from. And that's at 185.74. We haven't made it all the way back down there, but uh, that is an area of support. We've made it down to a low today of 186.17. So watch that 185.74 level. Now coming back to a breakout area can be a buy. I don't have a pattern out here. I do have an A to B equals CD pattern. We can draw that in. So let's do that out here. Let's see if that really finishes off in the price area that we're taking a look at. So here's your A to B point or approximately. Let's just simply go ahead and move this over to the C point. I'm going to try to at least. Uh, there we go. So now let's move this. So we are at the, this has done more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD. So what this says, Bill, I don't know if you're in it, if you're looking to get in it, um, if you're looking to add, if you're looking to short. But right now, if this generates a bullish reversal candle, it's not likely to do that today, by the way, uh, then you would get a confirmed by the D point pattern. Uh, but other than that, as long as price holds 185.74, it looks okay. Now on a weekly time frame, we have price that right now is trading below the center of its bear structured weekly profile. I have a way, a potential wave seven top out there. So we do have a topping signal, Roadsman to indicator signal, but no bearish reversal candle. That's really not important. What's important comes Friday. If on Friday you see a close below 194.94, that is suggesting that price should be able to push its way down to 168.50. It's not a guarantee, and the reason it's not a guarantee is because price at that stage will still not have, perhaps have not have broken the 185.74 level. But if it does break 185.74, then we could be looking to move towards that 168.50 area. So we're sort of at a point of not knowing what it wants to do and because of the a to b equals cd pattern i think the market will tell us what it wants to do if it is forming the bottom it would generate a bullish reversal candle on a monthly time frame we're just too early into the month but the monthly right now as of the 10th of april shows a roadsman to indicator top and that would then suggest to move back to 170. so you get a daily top a potential top on the monthly uh you do have a top on the weekly chart out there Glad to watch 185.74 like a hawk. So I hope that that provided you with clear information. Uh, and if not, then uh, just uh, uh, take a two by four out of Builder and just slap me upside the head. All right. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. If I've got any other requests, I was just checking inside the Tiger's Den. It was an interesting question posed by Dan in New York. Are trading forms no, naturally more quiet on red days? Do we have the data that red days have correlated to dental cleanings amongst traders out there? We know Dan from New York, or Dan's Dave. I'm sorry, that's Dave from New York. Uh, don't, 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 don't pay attention to me. That's my eyes out there. Um, there's nothing wrong with a good dental cleaning out there. You got to keep those uh, those choppers nice and clean. All right, so no other requests, nothing by email, nothing inside the Tiger's Den that I'm aware of. Uh, so what do we want to do? I'm going to go take a look at, uh, let's just see what's going on inside the market. Boy, the U.S. dollar index, that thing is just simply on fire. So let's do this here. Let's go take a look at the euro, see if the euro is getting crushed this morning or the yen or the pound and see where we're at here. So we've got the daily, weekly, monthly time frame, daily and weekly charts for the euro, the yen and the pound. So take a look at that move. Now, the euro has a TD9 count bottom pattern, and that's likely to get tested. That's also its breakout level, 1.0732. A failed pattern, which would then turn into a larger A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. I'm going to get rid of this small one in there. I would require a close below the low from April 2nd. That low is at 1.0724. If the euro closes below that, you're going to get a smaller A to B equals CD to the downside. Now, the weekly chart out here, let's take a look at the weekly chart. The weekly chart needs a close below 1.0695.
to, in order to generate an A to B equals CD to the downside pattern, uh, which would at least take us to its TD9 count bottom that formed us on a weekly time frame. Let me get my uh, crosshairs out here. That formed on the uh, week of October 6th, back in 2023 out there. That took price right up to its breakdown level at the 1.065 area. God, you got to love these tools. Okay, so that's what's going on. So the euro certainly is what's putting strength into the U.S. dollar, but it needs to break through that TD9 count bottom to suggest that it wants to continue to do that. And if you take a look at the yen, the yen is weakening big time. It is now taking out a TD9 count uh, top out there. Now, you can't really draw, well, at least let me open this up here. Oh, it's got a gigantic A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. Man, it's time to go back to Japan, folks. Especially if we could time this right here. So here's our A to B point, a TD9 count top. And I'm just simply going to move this over to the C point right here. So on a daily time frame, this is telling us, it's a beautiful thing, that the yen wants to get up into the 157, 158 area. And if I look at the weekly time frame chart out here, that probably off that offers us a gigantic A to B equals CD pattern. Holy shnikes. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors.
So during that break, folks, I went and took a look at the Japanese uh, yen on a weekly basis, and that's got an A to B equals CD pattern that may be forming. It says we get up to the 165 level. So I switched over to the uh, daily, uh, the uh, U.S. dollar index charts out here, and we take a look at these. Uh, you can see a potential A to B equals CD pattern to the upside forming inside the U.S. dollar index. Let's take a look at that on a uh, daily time frame. It's the June contract that we are looking at. There's your A to B. This should be your C point out there. 41% retracement. That says 106.53. And we take a look at the weekly time frame. We can see a little trend line as well as the top of its bearish structured profile at the 105.95 level. So it looks to me like price should go seek out that 105.95 level. That should go ahead and keep pressure on the uh, you know on the metals area which we took a look at this morning uh, out here uh, we've got two more requests let's see if we can get these squeezed in here the first one was to take a look at starbucks let me switch over our screens to the white background charts starbucks is in bar number seven uh, today of a td9 count uh, pattern it looks like there's an a to b equals cd pattern to the downside as well um what I'd be watching for here is I'd be watching for a TD9 count, potential TD9 count bottom pattern to form between tomorrow and uh, tomorrow be Thursday and Monday of next week out there. That's what the daily time frame chart shows. The weekly time frame chart is suggesting lower price. I can see a larger A to B equals CD to the downside with a likely price target of 81.67. That is the breakout level after the on the monthly TD9 count uh, top that formed out there. That's the breakout area at 81.67. So short of a uh, daily TD9 count pattern. I would have a T9 count bottom pattern, 81.67 is a likely price target. When we take a look at 30 year Treasury, 30 year Treasury has got a weekly A to B equals CD pattern that is, go is potentially going to form on Friday out there. Right now, we're trading below the swing point of that uh, B point. That would get us down into the 113 zone out there, somewhere around there. So that's what I see when I take a look at Starbucks. That's what I see when I take a look at the 30 year Treasury. And uh, real quickly here, let's go back and take a look at those. Uh, daily equity future contracts out there and not much more for me to report other than everything that i've shared with you so far so folks thanks so much for being here have a wonderful wednesday if you would i'll look forward to seeing you on terrific thursday stay tuned for all the great programming be safe out there take care